Dear students and friends, I welcome you to this lecture. The topic for today's lecture is syndicalism, nature, concept and its main features. Some of the points that will be highlighted during today's lecture are meaning of syndicalism, its origin and development, main features of syndicalism and finally some criticism against the syndicalist movement. Syndicalism refers to practice of organizing workers into unions to fight for their interests. The term syndicalism is derived from the French word syndicat, which means a trade union. It has its origin in the French labor movement, as we will discuss that slightly later. Syndicalism is taken as one of the forms of socialism and contains gleans from other doctrines that developed out of the mainstream of socialism. Like socialism, syndicalism is also seen as a reaction against the exploitative nature of emerging industrial capitalist system. Its primary concern has been the interests of laborers or working class in an industrial society and seeks to abolish private ownership of the means of production. The advocates of syndicalism argue that workers should have control over the industrial as well as political sphere of a society. Their main argument is that social class differ from one another not only in their economic interest but also in the ideas and institutions that grow out of the diverging interests. C.E.M. Jord, one of the famous social scientists, defines syndicalism as that form of social theory which regards the trade union organization as at once the foundation of the new society and the instrument whereby it is to be brought into being. Further, he argues that syndicalism is a socialist doctrine in the sense that it adopts the general socialist view of capital as theft endorses or rather extends the notion of class war as fundamental in a capitalist society and proposes to abolish private ownership of means of production and to substitute ownership by the community. Syndicalism has its origin in the French labor movement in the mid-19th century. Syndicalists called themselves a new school of socialism. George Sorrell and his writings, particularly his book titled Reflections on Violence, is believed to have greatly inspired the syndicalist movement. George Sorrell, having started out with Karl Marx, ends up with Henry Louis Bergson. From Marx, Sorrell took the idea of class struggle as the key to social change. While as Bergson provided Sorrell with his theory of intuition, according to which the aim of the man's actions are governed not by intelligent evaluation or reaction, but by intuition. Syndicalism, as already discussed, has its origin in France because the workers of France were not constitutionally allowed to form their own trade unions up to mid-19th century. As a result, they felt helpless and became skeptical about the existing political arrangement in the country to bring any reform in the system. However, despite the restrictions, the workers in France started organizing themselves in several secret societies which propagated radical proletarian ideas in the country. After the Charles Louis Napoleon came into power in France in mid-19th century, he recognized the wage earners as a potential source of popular support for his regime. Thus, to cultivate their goodwill, he allowed the working class to form unions and organize protests. Subsequently, it was in 1864 that the right to strike was recognized in France. However, after the collapse of Paris Commune in 1871, restrictions began to be imposed again. 
but in 1884 french law again recognized the right to form labor unions and strikes in 1886 national federation of all labor unions of france was formed but it could not satisfy the aspirations of the french working class in 1893 national federation of labor exchange was formed followed by the establishment of general federation of labor in 1895 which became the center of labor movement in the country it advocated radical initiatives to end the capitalist system and to take over the management of industry and control social life of the community the syndicalist movement was divided into two main groups revolutionary syndicalism also known as cgt and industrial unionism which is also called industrial workers of the world however despite the differences their spirit is closely analogs revolutionary syndicalism can be traced back to the libertarian tendency in the first international working men's association when prominent russian anarchist mikhail bakunin argued that the future social organization must be made solely from bottom up by the free association or federation of workers firstly in their unions then in the communes regions nations and finally in a great federation international and universal the charter of amiens adopted by the cgt in 1906 represents a key text in the development of revolutionary syndicalism rejecting the parliamentarianism and political action in favor of revolutionary class struggle In 1895 the CGT in France expressed fully the organizational structure and methods of revolutionary syndicalism influencing labor movements across the globe Industrial unionism or industrial workers of the world has its roots in the Marxist tradition when in 1905 it quoted the famous Marx dictum in its preamble to constitution and I quote in a state of the conservative motto a fair day's wage for a fair day's work we must inscribe on our banner the revolutionary watchword abolition of the wage system unquote it was an international syndicalist federation of various labor unions from different countries across the globe the association represents millions of workers and competed directly for the hearts and minds of the working class with social democratic unions and parties despite the different origins revolutionary syndicalism and industrial unionism converged on a very similar approach both revolutionary syndicalism and industrial unionism are non-political aiming to build unions for all workers regardless of the political persuasions however this does not mean syndicalists are indifferent to the great social and political issues of the day rather syndicalists argue that only by building democratic workers power at the point of production in other words by creating industrial democracy many social ills can be addressed it is their belief that when the industry of the world is run by the workers for their own good we see no chance for problems of unemployment war social conflict or large scale crime or any of our serious social problems to continue there existed another related tendency known as anarcho syndicalism of the cnt taking both political and economic action with an aim to take control of both workplace and political life anarcho syndicalists seek to abolish the wage system they considered it as wage slavery according to them state or private ownership leads to the division of society into rich and poor the anarchist movement was modeled on the development of labor exchange a worker central organization which would encourage self education mutual aid and facilitate communication with local workers syndicates according to hubert legard the perry joseph predon 
laid out the fundamental theories of anarcho syndicalism through his repudiation of both capitalism and the state his flouting of political government his idea of free autonomous economic groups and his view of struggle not as pacifism as the core of humanity the central organization of the workers of sweden established in 1910 is an important example of an anarcho syndicalist union currently the sac is one of the largest anarcho syndicalist union in the world in proportion to population with some strongholds in the public sector although the terms anarcho syndicalism and revolutionary syndicalism are often used interchangeably however the term anarcho syndicalist only came into wide use in 1921 22 when it was applied by communists to any syndicalist who opposed increased control of syndicalism by the communist parties John Rudolf Rocker is widely credited as the father of anarcho syndicalism. Syndicalism is a manifestation of disillusionment, a reaction of the proletariat against the state supported industrial capitalism operated with little regard to the workers' rights. Disillusioned with the oppression and suppression of the proletariat Syndicalist exclaimed that it was time to turn their backs on the state and to seek their own salvation in their own way it springs from a realization of the futility of the parliamentary machine as means to improve the quality of life combined with the promptings and stirrings of the revolutionary tradition syndicalists wanted to attain the ownership of the property from the hands of private owners by means of a direct action they regard trade union as inherently revolutionary bodies their main difference from other socialists lies in the social prominence they attach to trade unions to bring awareness among the working class they emphasize methods like strike sabotage etc they argue that the trade unions should practice these methods and make the working class conscious of their revolutionary role and drill them in the maneuvering tactics of the class struggle according to them general strike is the ultimate weapon to bring about a general economic and social revolution by means of general strike the instruments of production would be seized which will be end of capitalism the general strike as the backbone of syndicalist movement found very brief support in the US and England the main support was in countries where small industries flourished such as france italy spain and russia in fact it was in france that general strike was first exhaustively discussed and propagated in 1888 the congress of french national federation of trade unions voted in favor of general strike and the idea then spread rapidly even receiving some support from national political parties in France among its champions was Aristide Briand who later as a capitalist cabinet minister was it is vigorous opponent and oppressor besides strike as an important weapon syndicalists also emphasized various forms of sabotage like doing bad work spoiling or clogging the machinery adopting wasteful and sluggish methods damaging machines resulting in loss of time and costly repairs etc the syndicalists are hostile to the state as they consider it as a bourgeoisie and middle class institution they point out that the state aids and assists the capitalists in their exploitation of working class on the one hand and protects the interests of middle class on the other it is further pointed out by the syndicalists that the service of the state make men bureaucratic and unsympathetic to the needs and aspirations of those who are engaged in the actual work of production syndicalism recognizes the state as the most insidious as well as powerful enemy and rejects all participation in it its attitude towards the state is well stated by the victor griffols and i quote adversaries of the state and all its institutions 
from a political point of view, adversaries of the state and all its institutions from an economic point of view. Syndicalists visualized a future society where the power would remain with the trade unions. The local trade unions will be united in a confederation which will act both as an employment agency for the district and as a center of the trade union activities. It will remain in touch with the people and look after economic needs of the locality. In this respect, it will determine the nature and extent of production in the industries in the area under its control. In cooperation with other industrial confederations of other districts, it will manage for the imports and exports of products to and from these districts. Furthermore, society will be classless and stateless, wherein the place of the state will be occupied by the local and national organizations of the trade unions. Like many other socialist theories, syndicalism faced criticism on several grounds. Primarily, Syndicalism was criticized on the grounds that, despite an elaborate plan of action, it could not envisage a future society. It has also been criticized on accounts of its methods to bring revolution. The critics said that the creative vitality of society will be destroyed by the crude methods of syndicalists like strike, sabotage or any other violent methods it propagated. Such methods are bound to result in the loss of life and property. It is in this context that the moral value of violence advocated by the syndicalists has been challenged by its opponents. To conclude, we can say that like other socialists, the syndicalists consider capitalism as exploitative and a mechanism of theft. George Sorrell, one of the strong exponents of the movement, described syndicalism as a revisionism of the left. Syndicalists also believe in the class struggle between the bourgeoisie and working class or proletariat. Their objective is to abolish the private ownership of all means of production and substitute their ownership by the community. Following the Marxist principle, the syndicalists regarded the state their enemy because it was the bulwark of capitalism and capitalist exploitation. In fact, the revolutionary syndicalism, which developed in France towards the end of 19th century and later spread to Italy, was born out of the Marxist philosophy. Besides the anarchist movement, which regarded all political authority as evil, and a means of oppression influenced syndicalist movement so strongly that the later came to be known as anarcho-syndicalists. Thus, the aim of syndicalism is to unite all workers into one major union formed by the members from the grassroots to take control of the industrial and political sphere. The syndicalists emphasize the dignity of human labor and glorify labor as the noblest expression of human personality. This was all about syndicalism, concept, origin and its development. Hope you have understood the topic and its different aspects. Thank you for watching. See you soon with a new topic for discussion. Till then, goodbye.